Hey everyone, it's Haley, and today I'm going to be talking about the book series that I still need to finish. So, not too long ago, although I really don't know when I filmed it, but at some point this year, I did a video where I was talking about book series that I don't plan on finishing and have no interest in finishing. So I'll have that link down below for you guys. But today I wanted to talk about the book series that I do want to finish. It's just, when will I actually do it? So in that video, I was talking about how I'm not the hugest fan of series. I kind of come to learn that over the past year. I feel like I felt so pressured to love series because I think like most book lovers are like, yes, we love series like the longer the series the better whereas I'm like I would like shorter series if even any and I'm not like I'm not really into it that much I like to experience new stories more so than I like to continue with like certain ones that I've already read however there are some that I do like I'm left wanting more so I do want to continue with them but it always takes me a really long time to ever get to sequels I think part of that is because I've realized that the longer it takes for a sequel to come out, the more I forget what happened in the first book and then even refreshing myself, I feel kind of disconnected from the story and the characters. So I don't really want to get back into it, but it's kind of a complicated situation because like there are series that I want to finish, but it's been so long and yeah, it's just a mess. But anyways, let's just get into this list because I actually have a lot of books here. So I just wanted to take a second to thank the sponsor for today's video, Babbel. Babbel is an amazing language learning app that I have been using for quite a while now in my journey to learn French. If you didn't know, I recently moved to Quebec and I have been trying to learn French so then I can better integrate into the new province that I'm in. And Babbel has been essential as a tool to help me learn. The lessons are designed by real language teachers, so there's no AI or anything like that, which is really cool. So it's exactly what you would get in a classroom. It teaches real world practical conversations, which is exactly what I need. And it's in bite-sized lessons that take about 10 minutes. So if you're short on time, you can just do one lesson and still feel really accomplished and good about yourself. Or if you have extra time, you can do more than one. It's really customizable in that way. There are multiple ways to learn, including lessons, podcasts, games, videos, and even live classes. So it's not just you sitting there with a class. There are are many different options for you to learn. And I also love how it teaches you more than just vocabulary. It teaches you about the culture of the people who speak the language that you're learning, which is super cool. I think Babbel is great because not only will it get you speaking a new language, but it also will help you discover a totally different part of the world because of that. The French I've learned from the app has allowed me to connect more with where I live now and with the people around me, and in particular with my boyfriend and his family, which is really nice. For example, an essential thing that I've learned, which has allowed me to actually go through the drive through at Tim Hortons now, which it doesn't seem like a big deal, but it's really exciting for me. But I know how to order my coffee. Je prends un café très grand avec un lait et deux splendeurs. So Babbel has been kind enough to offer 65% off a subscription to those who click the link in my description box down below. I definitely recommend that you check it out and that's an awesome deal. It's great for even a holiday gift or with the new year coming up, a new year's resolution, all of those things. It's just a really great service and having a new language in your repertoire is something you'll never regret. So thank you so much to Babbel for once again supporting my channel and partnering with me today. So first off, I don't feel so bad about this one because it just came out, but that is The Kingdom of the Cursed by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the sequel to Kingdom of the Wicked, which came out last year and I listened to the audiobook for that one and I loved it and I have been wanting to get the sequel ever since so I plan on reading this really soon because I had a really good time reading the first book so I know this is one that I will probably enjoy. It's definitely one that I'm going to try and get to in like the next week or so. I'm going to try and get to it before the end of 2021 so fingers crossed I can actually do that. I also don't feel so bad about Act Your Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is not really a sequel but it's a companion 
companion to the Brown Sisters trilogy. It's the final book in that series and it came out, did it come out? No, the other one came out last year. Whew, for a second there I was like, no, I think this one actually came out a long time ago, but it's because the covers kind of look the same and the titles sound the same. But this one is following the youngest sister and it did come out this year and it is another one that I'm going to try and get to before the end of 2021, but like, who knows if that will really end up happening because I mean, I have big ambitions, but my follow through can be a little bit lacking. Next book is one that I'm definitely embarrassed about because I've had this book for so freaking long and that is The Crown's Fate by Evelyn Skye. I read The Crown's Game, oh my gosh, <laughs> it has to have been like four or even longer years ago now and I was so surprised by how much I enjoyed it. I fell in love with the world and the writing. Everything about it was a big success for me. So I got the sequel and it did take me a little bit to actually purchase the sequel but now I've had it for quite a while. I would say two years now or so and I just haven't turned to it. But I do remember loving the Crowns game so much that I really want to finish with it. So at some point I'm going to have to like refresh my memory. Maybe I'll do like a week long reading vlog where I just read sequels. I'm not sure if you guys would be into that. Please do let me know. But yeah, this is one that I really want to get to and I just haven't yet. Next is a sequel that I literally thought I had read. I didn't even realize that I hadn't read it yet until I went to go and plan for this video and I was like, oh my God, I definitely thought I was done with that. But that is This Dark Du- Our Dark Duet by Victoria Schwab, which is the sequel to This Savage Song. And I read This Savage Song a few years ago and really enjoyed it. It's great for around like October. I mean, you can read it any time of year, but you guys know me by now. Like I'm a mood reader, so I like to read it around October, but I didn't get to this one. I thought I had read it. I don't know why I've waited so long, but I have. And now like I'm definitely going to have to refresh my memory because I could not tell you what happened in this Savage song. I could even just tell you like the most vague of synopsises. I know it's dealing with monsters and two characters from like opposite sides of the world, if you will, and music is a way to fight these monsters. Like I don't even remember what the dang series is about. So you see my problem here. Next is the sequel in a series that I actually have another one of, but I don't even know where it is on my shelves. Oh, I just found it. But anyways, that is the Queens of Renthia series. So this is the third book. I still need to read the second book as well. So the second book is over there and it's The Reluctant Queen. This is the third book, The Queen of Sorrow. The first book is The Queen of Blood and I really loved that one. It's an adult fantasy, but it's following different queens in each book. So it's kind of like a companion story once again. So I should be okay to go into these without remembering what happened in the first book because I mean we all know that I don't remember what happened in the first book. It's nothing like I'm reading books too fast. My memory is just horrible which apparently is a side effect of depression which I didn't realize but my memory is absolutely awful. So it's very hard for me to remember what I've read. Like the second I close a book, it's like, that was fun. And then I could read it again. And it would be like, I read it for the first time. But this was a very inventive series. It was like a natural fantasy from what I remember. There were these spirits and there was like a tree school. It was really interesting. So I have had the sequels, like I had pre-ordered them. And it was funny because I remember the second one showed up and I was like, Oh cool. And then the third one showed up like a couple months later and I was like, wait, what? Because they came out so quickly. So after that, I was just, I was lost. Next is Majesty by Catherine McGee. So I actually had started listening to the audiobook for the sequel earlier in the year, but I think it was around when I was moving. So I didn't end up finishing with it. So it is one that I'll get to. Like, I know it's not going to take me that long. And I do actually remember what happened in the first book. So the first book left off on quite a cliffhanger and it's really going to change things up for the characters of this series and that is why I've very much wanted to read the sequel although I have heard some mixed things about it. If you aren't familiar with this series it is an alternate history story where at the end of the Revolutionary War instead of offering George Washington the presidency he was offered a crown so now we are following the Washington royal family and it is very juicy, very interesting. Next is one that I know so many of you are gonna yell at me for, but like, listen, it took so long for this book to come out. And these books take so much out of me that 
I just haven't had the will to read it, and that is Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Maas. Yep, I have not finished with the Throne of Glass series. I read all of the books up until this one, and now I just, like, there's so much that has happened in those books that I feel like I'm either going to have to reread them, which is going to absolutely kill me, or I'm going to have to do a refresh and hope that that's enough, and I don't know that it will be. Even Tower of Dawn, I don't remember what happened in that one at all, so like, it's just super tragic because it literally is a series where everything changes very quickly and like I don't want to reread them. I like them, but I don't want to reread them. So that is why I haven't finished with the series yet. And this has been out for a good chunk of time now. To be fair, I'm pretty sure its original publication date was pushed back, but like, let's be honest, even if it was published when it was supposed to, I probably wouldn't have read it. But yeah, that's, you know, I am caught up with the rest of her series though. So at least there's that. I guess. Oh my god, that's actually not true. I just remembered a book. <laughs> so I also need to read A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas. Completely forgot about this book's existence. I think because of the cover change that was upsetting to me and because, I don't know, these books are very random. Like the whole way that the series ended up going, very weird, very random. So the book before this one is so tiny and then we have this like, I'm just confused. Make it make sense. It just doesn't, but yeah, I do need to finish with this series at some point. Another embarrassing one is that I haven't finished with the Caraval series by Stephanie Garber. She now has a new book out, which is like a completely different series. I don't know if it's a series actually, but she has a new book out that I'm very excited to read, but I just, I kind of feel like I should finish with this series first. I really enjoyed it. I don't remember what has happened, so definitely going to need a refresh, uh, but yeah, I did enjoy the book like I enjoyed following the sisters. It was supposed to be a standalone, then they added a sequel, and I don't know if it was supposed to just be a duology and then this one was added, but I just never got around to it. This next one, I don't feel so bad about, although a lot of you guys might have strong feelings about it, but I still need to finish with the Cruel Prince series. Now, I don't feel so bad about this one because I didn't love the first book as much as everyone else did. I liked it, but I didn't love it. And this book has like a really like very dedicated following. And I just never got into it that much. My sister really liked the first book, but then she read the sequels. And actually, I don't know if she ever read this one, but she definitely read the second one and said that it wasn't as good. So with me not having fallen in love with the first book, I was kind of like hesitant to go into the other two. But it is is still a series like I would at least like to give the second book a try but this is why I don't like order sequels before I've read the first book now I don't pre-order them because they show up on my doorstep and then I'm like oh oops and then they just end up piling up next is children of virtue and vengeance by Tomi Edayemi this is the second book the sequel to children of blood and blown but ugh, children of blood and bone and that book came out and like everyone was talking about it and then this book came out a couple years ago and I feel like I didn't really hear anything about this one, which is kind of strange because the first book was so hyped up and there was just kind of whatever. But I did like the first book, so I would like to continue with the series. I just, yeah, I have a hard time picking up sequels and this unfortunately has suffered from that as well. Next, I also need to pick up the sequel to Ray Bearer by Jordan Ifueco. So I actually did just order it yesterday because like I had a coupon at Indigo, so I ended up ordering it and I'm really excited for it to come in. I think it's Redemptor, I'm pretty sure is what the title is. I'm not sure, but I was really blown away by this fantasy when I read it earlier this year. So I knew this was definitely one where I would want to pick up the sequel. And luckily, I mean, I'm gonna have it soon. So I better read it soon. Next is another companion that I don't really feel like extremely bad about, but that is Isn't It Bromantic by Lisa K. Adams. This is the companion to, or the third book? Is it the third or the fourth? I can't even remember, but it's part of the Bromance Book Club series, which a new book has come out every year and I have been caught up with them. And no, I think this is the fourth one actually, but I've really liked them. I have kind of mixed feelings on certain ones, but this is the latest one that came out earlier this year and I need to get to it at some point. This one's following the Russians point of view and I think that seems fun but I'm also very interested to see how it's going to play out because he's very much just been a comic relief character so I'm excited for him to get like more of a storyline. Next is a book that I would love to get to before the end of 2021 but 
chances are that's not going to happen. So it is one that I'm going to try and get to in early 2022, and that is Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. This is the sequel to King of Scars, and I love the Grishaverse. Like, everything about it, I absolutely adore. And Nikolai is one of my favorite characters, if not my favorite character. Like, him and Nina, I just absolutely love them. I mean, I love all the characters because they're all so great, but they just have special places in my heart. And this series is focusing on Nikolai. And I have had the sequel for quite a while, but it came out like when I was moving and I knew I wanted to have the time to actually dedicate to it and not be distracted and be able to give this book the best chance that I possibly could. But the first book ended on quite a cliffhanger. There were some really interesting things done. So I'm very eager to see what's going to happen in this sequel and I hope that I can get to it in the next few months. Next are the final two books of the Miss Peregrine series by Ransom Riggs. So I think this one comes first and then it's this one, but The Conference of Birds and The Desolations of Devil's Acre. This book, like the series was supposed to be a trilogy and then they ended up going with a different publisher and publishing three more books. And I've read the fourth one, but I haven't gotten the chance to read the two of these. I think because like, I like to read them around Halloween and it's always been a little bit crazy around Halloween lately, so I haven't gotten the chance to get to them. Really I can read them whenever and I should so then I can be done with the series. Not that it's bad or anything, but just because like I like finishing things so it would be nice if I just read these whenever and finished with the series. It's a great series and I mean it's just time that I finish with it, you know? Next I have the final book for the Kiss of Deception series. I think it's called The Remnant Chronicles actually. Yes, it is. So I read the second one, but I think I'm going to have to reread it because I don't remember at all. The first book I really liked and highly recommend, but I haven't read the second one. Haven't read, well, no, that's not true. I just told you I did. Wow. I read the second one, don't remember it. And because of that, I've never gotten to the third one. And the third one is significantly bigger than the other ones. But there also is like a companion series, The Dance of Thieves, which I at one point had the second book because I had an arc of it, but I definitely do have the first book. So like, this has just been stacking up on my TBR basically and for literally no reason. Next is one that I'm kind of not sure if I really want to read the sequel because I liked the first book a lot, but I don't remember what happened at all. And that is Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer. I think there's a third book. I thought this was a duology for the longest time, but I'm pretty sure there's a third book too. So I'm very behind on things, but I did read the first book. Like I said, really liked it. So I don't see why why I wouldn't get to this one, but I guess it's just like me not really being that into sequels. And lastly is Kingdom of the Blazing Phoenix by Julie C. Dow. This is another case of it being a companion. It's the companion to, oh gosh, what's it called? Forest of a Thousand Lanterns, which was super cool. It's an evil queen retelling. It's just very interesting. And this I don't know that much about other than that it's companion, so it's not following the same characters, and I think that might be why I've been kind of hesitant to go into it. Okay, so I might be missing some, but I'm pretty sure those are all of the series that I would like to finish, and I mean, I'm sure there are some that I'm definitely forgetting. I'm just, I'm looking at my shelves, but I only talked about books that like the sequels are actually out, so if there are some that the sequel's coming out, that doesn't mean that I'm not going to finish them, it's just, I felt like I would, you know, narrow it down and focus on ones where the sequels are already in the world. So please let me know if you have finished any of these series, if you thought it was worth it, or if there's any that I should just skip, give up on. I would love to know. And thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you in another new one soon. Bye!